if men were angels, no government would be necessary. What do you think of my little aphorism there? We all acknowledge that individuals who are less kind, less thoughtful, honest, less honest exist in the world. And we acknowledge that we ourselves are not perfect beings, but do we actually act that way? How often do we see ourselves as the arbiter of what is correct, that we know what others should do? I fear our country suffers from a perfection complex. Our response to disagreements is often quite harsh. If you do not agree with me, you must be either stupid or a terrible person. The challenge of government is to get enough people in agreement so that some progress may be made, some compromise that is. When Hamilton and I brought together the Constitution Convention in 1787, our one overwhelming goal was that we should become a single nation. If we could attain that one lofty goal, then we could accomplish our other goals at the ballot box. Should we fail and split apart, we would soon become Europe. Unbridled corruption, constant intrigue, eternal warfare. To save our children, we were able to find compromise. <clears throat> I wanted the Congress to have the right to nullify state laws that violated the Constitution. Instead, we got a vague notion of states' rights and eventually John Marshall. I worked hard to convince the delegates of the wisdom of my ideas, but I failed. I could have walked out in protest at any moment, but to what advantage? I lost a fight for one detail. And was I really all that convinced that I was correct about it? Many of us wanted a prohibition against a standing army. Armies have a bad habit of overstrowing governments. I lost that debate too, although I did get a concession that the army would only be funded for two years at a time. Should one party enlarge the army, the next party to take power can then shrink it back to its original size. As you may be aware, Jefferson and I were great proponents of a citizen's militia, men who were trained in the art of warfare and ready to protect their country should the need arise. In 1812, I discovered how wrong we were. The militias were not so well trained, not so loyal, and not so courageous. It was a disaster. So perhaps a professional army would not be such a bad thing after all. So this is my admonishment to you, my friends. Do not be so certain of your correctness. Avoid the self-righteousness of thinking that your adversaries are evil. Search for compromise. Sit down with your adversaries and talk to them about their concerns. If you want to build a better nation, talk to people that you don't agree with. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been an Ajna. Well, that 